Hey guys, welcome to the 3D Animation Hub. My name is Brian, a 3D animator, and today we're going to be talking about the graph editor. Now, the graph editor for some people is this mysterious thing that they don't know too much about, they don't really touch it, they just kind of like move their keys and set their keys and do everything in the viewport. But then, on the other side, we have people that are very familiar with the graph editor and they do half or more of their work in the graph editor. So this video is kind of directed at both people. I'm gonna just lay down everything I know about the graph editor, all the hotkeys, all the tools that'll help you increase workflow and just everything I've learned over the past year animating professionally in Blender at a big studio. Um, there are things I learned right at the beginning from coworkers. There are also things that I learned very, very, very recently, like last week, that I'm like, holy crap, you can do this in the graph editor? So we're gonna be covering all of that. We're gonna be going from the beginning to the end, just everything I know from setting it up to a little bit more advanced stuff that you can do with the graph, ed with the graph editor. Um, there's actually some stuff you can do in Blender that you can't do in Maya, which uh, I'll be covering at the end of the video. So make sure to stay till the end. Feel free to follow me on my socials. I have Instagram, I got Twitter, I got Twitch, which I'll hopefully be streaming soon. And of course, if at any point you learn something or you like something I say, something I say is cringe or whatever, make sure to smash that like button. And if you don't like it, then you can hit this like. Don't do that. Don't hit this like. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's hop in. I can't wait for this video. Alright guys, so we're gonna start this off with uh, the first thing I do when I open my graph editor. So as you guys can see, all the colors here are black. Um, we got some gray on yellow, we got some red on gray, we got some, I don't know, it's just all these different colors that it's just not nice on the eyes. First thing I do is I go to view, show group colors, and I uncheck that. And then now we got something that's a little bit more familiar to me, that's a little bit closer to Maya. And the next thing I'm going to do is, let's say for example, I select this key right here and you know it's, it's highlighted here but the issue is we have all these other controllers here where I only just selected the arm I just want to see the arm controller you know I just that's that's the only thing I want to see here and this is kind of distracting and sometimes it's even like somewhere in the middle you got to go find the highlighted one and it's just not cool so how you fix this is by clicking this little cursor button right here it says only show selected so once I click this if I go change controllers as you can see the name changes here we get just we just get the controller that we're selecting and it's a lot easier to work with it's, it just makes your workflow a lot faster and then uh, the next thing is you know I just double click on the Y location and let's say I want to move the Y location but then I'm selecting multiple different channels right now all I wanted was the Y location channel that's what I double clicked on but I can still select everything else the way you can fix that is going to view only selected curve keyframes you check this now once you double click on you know let's say the Y boom none of the other keys are showing up here I can just go and move this one in particular so a few other things let's say I want to select all of my controllers I'm going to press A on my uh, viewport here and now I'm going to press A on the channels to select all of the channels and then I'm going to press A on my graph editor part where the curves are and now we've selected every single key on every single curve on every single channel on every single controller and you know if I was doing this real time it would look like this so it took about I don't know one to two seconds and I selected every single curve every single key every single channel Another cool thing you can do is, let's say we select this uh, cog right here, the center of gravity. And let's say we just want to set a key on the translate Y here. So we, I'm going to go to translate Y. So the, what, what I just did to zoom in was to press the number pad, period. You can see it right up here. So on the number pad, you just press period and that focuses on what you have selected. So let's say I just want to set a key on my location Y. I can do that inside the graph editor. So I can come here press I and we get presented with uh, all these options and so this is where you can select you can say I want to set a key on all the channels or you can say I just want to set a key on the selected channel which is my Y location so I'll do that and now if we go to X there's no key there if we go to Z there's no key there and the only key is on our Y now you can individually move this so I'm selecting this and I'm pressing G and Y 
And so what that does is I can move it um, vertically up and down. If I go left and right, it doesn't really move left and right. If I do want to move the key left and right, I can press GX and it would just move this inside the graph editor. So since we're still talking about selected keys, uh, another thing you can do, another way you can hide certain channels is you can select whatever channel you want. Let's say I want to just see the locations and I can press shift H. Now everything else is hidden. And if I press on the center of gravity, for example, which is what we had selected, rotation and scale is hidden and all we see is location. Okay, and so to undo this, you can just press Alt H. So again, Shift H to hide, Alt H to unhide everything again. Okay, let's move on to some more hotkeys. Uh, so in Maya, you can have things in step mode, you can have them in Bayesian, you can have them in you know spline and auto and clamp and all that stuff. So let's say we want to have our animation here. We got a very nice animation. A very nice animation right here let's say we want to have this in steps so i'm gonna press a here select all my controllers a a so that lets me select all my keys again and now i press t to bring up the keyframe interpolation now we got several options here we have constant which is for blocking this is uh what makes your animation into step mode now what's happening is when we go through this we have just our different poses here so there's nothing in between, it's just step mode. So just like Maya, we have linear and um, that's just pretty self-explanatory and Bayesian is essentially auto. So that it's on auto spline. And so that's what we have here. The thing is with Blender, we have more options. So here, let's go ahead and go to our cube right here. I'm going to press control tab on my viewport. And that allows me to go into object mode so I can select this before we were on pose mode so i'm selecting my cube and let's look at the nice animation we have here okay that's what we have cool so it just goes from here to here and you know what let's uh, let's reduce this down to there we go so now uh when we go to let's go to our location x this is the cube going from left to right and i'm going to press t and we have this thing where it says back so when you press this we have something like this the cube reaches its destination but then it bounces back a little bit and so there's a couple other cool things so we have bounce here which makes the cube bounce when it reaches its destination and lastly we have elastic which it's pretty much like an elastic band and so it's pretty cool like personally i would animate this myself um, i don't really want a machine doing that for me but you know, if you're looking for something quick, this is definitely something you can look into. And I, I don't think this is something that Maya offers. So let's say I want to move these two handles separately. A way you can separate these is by pressing V and this will bring up your handle type. And this way you can have multiple options. In, in my case, if I want to move them separately, I'm going to press free and that frees one of the handles from the other. So now I can move this one this way and I can move the other one this way. And and if you want something that's like a bouncing ball, for example, let's go to the Z location and set a key here. And I'm going to press V and make this into a vector. So when I drag this down, you guys can see when you're making a bouncing ball, you want to make this nice V shape. This will already give you that. So normally it'll be like this. And once you go to V vector, it makes it into a nice V shape. And you guys can experiment with all these options. I, I don't think we have time to go in uh, through every single one but I just want to show you the shortcuts and all the things that are actually possible. So another cool thing that I want to show you is being able to scale from cursor. So currently if I, you know, okay, let's go to control X. If I take this, let's say I want to scale this out to go sideways, to go horizontally. So if I press S, which is to scale, and then X, which I just want to go horizontally, it starts spreading in both sides, but what I wanted to do is start expanding from this point. So I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go ahead and go into to this little uh, square, the dot inside. I'm going to change this to a 2D cursor instead of a bounding box. And now when I press S and then X, it starts, the keys start expanding from where my cursor is, from my, where my uh, keyframe is. It's not going back this way, it's not spreading in both sides. I'm using my hands to show you guys, but you can't see my hands. <laughs> let's bring this back. And now let's say we want to flatten this handle. The way you can do this is pressing Shift S. 
and then you can come here to the top right, flatten handle. And I, I couldn't find that option anywhere else. Uh, I had a coworker of mine actually show me that. I had no idea that it existed, but that's, I, as far as I know, that's the only way you can flatten and handle. You can just select it, shift S, you gotta hold S, and then you can come to flatten handle. So I'm gonna show you just a few more things and then we're done. So the second last tool I wanna show you guys is when you go to channel and you can uh, go to extrapolation. The hotkey for this is shift E, so I'll just do that. So shift E, now we have a constant extrapolation. So what the constant does is it keeps the, the value of the last key essentially at that. It would keep that line flat to the last value of the last key. Now if I were to change this to linear, let's go to linear extrapolation. That is really hard to say. I'm just gonna say X from now on. Linear X, it goes in a linear line infinitely. So, you know, our last key here is at frame 20, but if we play this, it'll just keep going past frame 20. So it's an infinite line upwards in a linear fashion. Now our third and pretty much last option is, is cyclic. And what this does is it creates a cycle. And that's pretty much how you create cycles in, in Blender is you can press that. And the way you can get rid of a cycle is shift E and then clear cycle. And that'll get rid of that cycle for you. Okay, now the, the juicy part that uh, we already talked about a few things that Maya doesn't have, but this is another thing that I really, really love that I learned about very recently. And that is pretty much the attribute editor for the graph editor. <laughs> so you know how usually you have the you know, attribute editor here? For in Maya and in Blender. Um, so you can have the same thing by pressing N. You can have the same exact thing for the graph editor. So here, for example, um, I double clicked on my X location and we have this cool thing here that's called modifiers. And chick, this schnitzel has your cake out. Uh, you could do a lot of stuff with this, but right now we're just gonna cover, we're just gonna cover noise. We're just gonna go into noise. And so look at this. So when I, I, I added the noise right away and this adds uh, essentially jitteriness to your animation. It's, you don't have to, it's like baked in, you don't have to key anything. So I just had, you know, two keys, one like a linear line and this is what we have now. Now that's pretty cool if you want like a machinery or something, you have a machinery in your, um, in your scene, you have some sort of vehicle, you have just, you, you want some sort of stutter, you can add this in right away. You, you don't have to go and like, um, you can do the same thing in Maya, but you have to write it like a little code for it. You have to, it's like you gotta do all this stuff. Here it's just a single button. You select that, you can select what channel you want it on. And on top of that, you have full control over it. So let me just drag this out. So we have scale to adjust it in the X axis. So this tells it how fast and like how, um, how slow you want it to jitter, for example. Yeah, that's, that's a little crazy. We have strength to adjust it on the Y axis. So that's like the intensity and not the amount of jitters. <laughs> a little too intense for our liking. Let's do something like that. There you go, now it's just stuttering. And lastly, we have depth, which increases the resolution of the noise. Okay, and on top of that, you can of course tell it, um, okay, I wanna start at frame zero and I want it to end at, let's say, frame 10. There you go. You can just increase and decrease that. You can tell it, okay, I just want the jitter here. And do you have, you can have it like fade in and fade out. Like, come on, this is like insane. This is just like the applications for this are endless. You can do so much with this. And you know, it's not just noise here. You have all these other uh, modifiers. If you guys like, leave a comment down below. We can go through them uh, in a later video, but I think this video has gone on for long enough. And I think that about covers it. For this video actually so if you did enjoy this make sure to smash that like button again feel free to follow me on my other social medias if you like make sure to get your two free months of scale shared i have a link down below you can get my premium course for free once you sign up as well on top of thousands of other amazing courses on skillshare and lastly i want to give a huge thank you to my beautiful patrons thank you guys for your continuous support and with all that out of the way happy animating and i will see you guys in the next animation video